Well, the first debate was mild compared to night two. Wednesday, many of the 10 Democratic candidates, well, they had their claws out. Uh, Joe Biden took the brunt of the attacks. Oakland University's Dr. Dave Dulio is here to talk with us. We always love having you uh, in after an election, after a debate. It's great Primary. to be here. Good Thanks seeing you. Me. Yeah, you too. So last night, you start watching that debate after they get through the fanfare about 20 right. minutes in. You start to realize pretty quickly it's all about getting Joe Biden. Right. And boy, the two nights of this debate couldn't have been any different. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the first night for me was really about the moderate candidates, Bullock and, and Delaney, uh, taking on the progressives, Warren and Sanders. And night two was all about Joe Biden. And he walked into that debate with a target on his back. And eight of those other candidates, there was one that wasn't quite as aggressive with right. him, but right. the other eight, boy, they took their shots at Joe. And uh, he really, uh, you know, he, I think he did what he had to do to, to, uh, to withstand those. We've been talking about those attacks on Biden a lot this morning. Mm -hmm. What else did you find remarkable about last night? I think that's a great word for one of the things that I noticed, which was... It's almost like Joe Biden is the incumbent, right? Mm -hmm. The person running for re-election. And, and in part, that's because he's got such a long track record and a long record of votes from the Senate and eight years in the Obama administration. And the remarkable thing to me was he was having to defend the Obama administration record on things like health care and immigration when not that long ago... Uh, all Democrats were holding up the Obama administration as a model, but it just shows you how how far the Democratic Party, in some respects, has shifted. Where that's not any good anymore. Do you do you think that? I think I might know the answer to this, but don't you feel like perhaps that that President Trump has changed the way we even watch these types of debates? Because it, when you watch somebody like Joe Biden last night, and I, and I had said this on my radio show earlier this morning, I said. Here's a guy that does have a lot of experience, has been around a long time. Yeah. You were kind of expecting him to maybe come back and just say, hey, you and you are both making this about me, which shows you know, what a force I am in all of this, where my poll numbers are. He doesn't do that. Trump would have done that. So how do you stand <laughs> out? Well, it's, stand out is a, is a good way to put it. And mm -hmm. all the candidates that participated we're looking for that moment. Now, the setup allowed some of them to do that better than others, yeah. and, and you see that in the, in the wide range of speaking time. But I think it's all part of the strategy that the campaign uh, and the candidate decide beforehand how they're going to sort of tack with, um, with the winds of the debate as, as they're blowing during the two hours or yeah. so that, that it's on. Biden definitely had the most face time. I think it was uh, 22 minutes or something right. of speaking time. Uh, other than that, who did you think came away as the winner of this debate or uh, maybe someone whose name is a little more recognizable now? Sure. I think from the first night, Marianne Williamson, uh, without a doubt, she uh, watching it on television, it appeared to me that she got the loudest and most boisterous uh, cheers of the night for a couple of her comments. So, mm -hmm. and, and we saw her, her Google searches spike and, and those sorts of things. So the, the night for her was good. I think Cory Booker uh, had a couple of zingers last night that, that might make him pop out a little bit. But rather than one winner or loser, I think what we have to do is look at these as a setup for the next round of debates in September and that's because the the threshold for qualifying for that debate goes w up significantly and we won't have 20 we'll have seven or eight and it's about getting into that top tier yeah. so you've got for sure Biden Warren uh, Sanders Harris for sure probably Buttigieg uh, who else we'll see how do you get in that top tier four polls have to show you polling above I think four percent right. And there's some are obviously have already are they're already there. there oh, there's no doubt about yeah. it. And it's really going to be for me about how the progressives line up against the moderates. And it and and really there's two lanes, right? There's the progressive lane, the moderate lane. Biden is the moderate lane. The other moderates in the in the race, they're not going to get it, right? But it's really going to be a fight among the progressives: Warren, Sanders, Harris maybe a couple others, but those three for sure, how they engage Biden the next time around. And it's really, I think, going to be who out of those three emerges to be a one-on-one -on -one progressive versus moderate with Biden down the road. Ten seconds left. Is, is health care the biggest thing? Is that going to be the biggest debate in this election? Within the Democratic primary, absolutely. 
in the general is probably immigration. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. All right. Great stuff. Great Dr. seeing you. Dr. Julia, see you too. thank you so much for coming. My in. pleasure. Happy to do it. It's been a, a long, probably night for you, <laughs> so we appreciate you coming in. Uh, we're coming right back with another check of your weather and traffic on the twos next.